Today's ADOS systems are very, very complicated and can do a lot for the driver and the safety of the car and the driver behind the wheel. However, every customer who has one of these may or may not know its limitations. It is advised that every customer who has an ADOS system test it out and get to know how it operates. How quickly does the car brake? When will it slow down? Will it slow down in enough time that you may have to take your own action and step on the brakes? as is the case with this Mazda here. These systems do a lot, but you need to be an aware driver and this one in the case didn't quite see the car in front of them quick enough and smashed into it and kind of destroyed the whole front bumper and of course damaged the radar. The radar was replaced, but it's going to need calibrated. We're gonna show you how to do it on this Mazda next. You'll notice I don't have the DOS 3000 rack in front of me right now as it's not needed for this procedure. Everything I need is right here in front of us right now over to the left. First thing we're gonna do is get into diagnostics. I'm already hooked up to our DLC with our VCI. So we're gonna auto VIN this and cycle the ignition as well. This is where we get our steps in for all uh, us ADOTS techs. And of course, prior to any ADOS calibration, go ahead and do a pre-scan to make sure there are no DTCs related to the accident that was caused or any problems with the radar itself. So I'm gonna select all, we're gonna press continue. I'm gonna select pre-scan here. This will save us a scanned copy of our pre-scan in our ADOS link that we can provide to the customers after we're all done with everything. Also, it'll, we'll have a calibration report and a post scan as well. So it's gonna run through every module. We wanna make sure we have no DTCs that could prohibit us from doing the radar calibration. I don't have any DTCs related to the actual um, radar. So we're good to go with that. I'll go back out of here and go into ADOS calibration. We'll have a couple choices that show up here, but we're going to select the front facing radar. First thing that's gonna show up on your screen, on your ADOS link, is your required materials, which we have out. We have a laser, we have our distance laser, our holder, and our actual reflector assembly there and the stand that is used with it. So we'll press continue, I have all that ready to go. This function will adjust the front millimeter wave radar. Awesome, verify and make sure that this was installed correctly. Hopefully the body shop that you're working with has already checked and made sure that this was installed correctly to OEM specifications, which can be found in the service manual. The bracket was replaced as well as the radar and everything was in specifications before they put the bumper back on. So perform this calibration anytime the sensor is reinstalled after removal. So not just replacement, anytime it's actually removed. If the new sensor is installed, any of the parts near the sensor were damaged in a collision or if it cannot see the vehicle in front of it. Your required preconditions are always on our ADOS link anytime you do an ADOS calibration. Good tires, good lighting. We have a lot of distance in front of us as well. Cause you're gonna see that I'm actually gonna really back this up quite a bit. We're talking 5,000 millimeters in front. So we have to have a lot of room. Make sure your tires are set to correct PSI. No unnecessary weight is in the vehicle. Those are all important things. Make sure that your calibration is successful. We're gonna do the guided tour summary and we'll go through that step by step. So the first thing we're gonna do now is start positioning our radar stand. So I'm gonna actually probably get rid of this stand here, start moving this into position and we'll probably just have this handheld from here on out. So we've got our radar reflector in front of our vehicle right now. Of course, we're not set up to the distance yet, but we'll go through that step by step. It's gonna ask us to grab our laser holder. We're gonna slide that on the front 
and it's also telling us to make sure that we have this in the zero position right here. You can see I'm sliding back and forth and there is a ruler and I'm gonna set that to the zero position. And we're gonna grab our distance laser and point to the center of the license plate of the bumper. So I'll put this in here. And it hasn't told us a distance yet. We're just kind of starting to get set up here. Trying to get everything ready to go for this. And it says point the laser right at the front bumper. You can see it right there in the middle there. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and press continue. There's five parts of this, so make sure you do each step one at a time. Don't press skip. Right now, we're going to go ahead and grab our alignment laser and set it on top. Like so. And we're asked at this point to open up the trunk, turn the laser level the alignment tool on, and I'm gonna split the logos. I'm gonna split the front Mazda logo with the logo on the trunk at the same time. This is where it can get a little tricky. You'll see we're gonna try and get this stand level with the vehicle, but we're also gonna be establishing 5,000 millimeters away from the vehicle. So there's gonna be a little bit of tweaking involved at this point. Right now, I'm only at 2,900 millimeters right now. I gotta get to 5,000, and I still need to split and get and maintain a perfect center line of the car. So I'm gonna open up the trunk first before I turn that laser on, because it'll beep at us. You can see I'm gonna be using the emblem right back there. And I'm gonna use the emblem on the front of the car. All main, trying to maintain a center line and 5,000 millimeters at the same time. So there is a little bit of finesse needed to get it just right. And you'll see I'm coming back, coming back quite a bit of distance too. We're at 5,000 millimeters right now from here to the front of the car. We've split the logos using our alignment laser. We're gonna press continue and see what they say to do next. Now we're going to make sure that our stand is level. You've got your three adjustment points on your stand itself and you've got a bubble level right on the stand itself so you can check to make sure that everything's perfectly level on your stand. Just adjust it to make sure you get it where you like it. We're level now, we'll press continue. It's at this point making sure it says, hey, after you're done with that, go ahead and flip this back on and make sure that you're still adjusted right in that center line. Make sure, it's just telling you, let's make sure we didn't change the center line of the car, which we didn't change the center line of the car. We were pretty good. We weren't too far off with uh, our level, so nothing changed. Now we can go on to actually getting the height of our reflector. So I'm gonna flip the actual alignment laser in the holder to point straight down at the floor. So I'll point this straight down. I'm gonna loosen it up in the back here and raise this to 710 millimeters. Once you're at 710, we'll press continue. But we'll take this off before we do that. It says that in the instructions. At this point, this needs to go away because we're almost ready to start calibrating. I just moved my stand over there 
No metal needs to be in the way, so I moved it far out of the way. And it's also telling me to make sure nobody enters the area and that also I need to be out of the way of the radar aiming itself. Make sure the doors are closed. Don't move the car. None of that needs, everything should be good right now. I can press continue. It does have the warning right here saying that the radar transmit radio waves during the calibration and you need to be at least 20 centimeters out of the way, which we are right now. Once I press continue, we're gonna begin calibration and hopefully our microphones will pick it up. Mazda does have a very loud radar and you'll hopefully get to hear that here in just a moment when I press continue. If you listen carefully to the radar, you could actually hear it. It was Morse code for, I'm in calibration, move out of the way, idiot. No, but really, <laughs> you could hear the radar on that pulsing as it was sending the actual signal to our reflector and then back. And our calibration was successfully completed. So our front radar is, is calibrated right now. We have a report that is now saved in our ADOS link showing that the calibration was done. As with any ADOS calibration, your next step is a test drive. Verify the system operates as designed and is working in real traffic conditions. Does the vehicle slow down as intended? Does it get too close to the car? Does it maintain distance? These are all very important things, especially on these front collision systems. So test drive it, then get your post scan for your customer as well. Go back in, read your DTCs, verify that there is no other DTCs related to the calibration or anything that you did, and then you have three different reports that you can provide to your customer. At this point, last thing I'm gonna go do is hit the road and make sure it works. I've got plenty of places around here I can make sure that I maintain distance of the cars. Anytime you want any other ADOS type system training, make sure you hit the Hunter YouTube learning channel where we've got a ton of ADOS videos for different kinds of cars, systems, and procedures as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.